everyone welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be doing the mother's day tag video i love doing tags i think it's a great way to connect with my subscribers um for you to get to know me a little bit better and i just find them fun in general so i thought i'll do a mother's day one since i am a mum of two and mother's day in australia is just around the corner so let's get into it. I'm going to leave all the questions down below in the description bar. So please do check that out and feel free to do this tag as well. I would love to see your video and your response to these questions. And if you do do it, please tag me so I can go and watch your video as well. So let's get into it. I've got 20 questions to get through. So I've got them on my phone here. Let's do it. So the first question is, are you a stay home mum or a working mum? I'm both, so I work three days a week and then two days a week I'm home with the kids. Um, so I'm a bit of both and obviously I'm home for the weekends as well. Would you have it any other way? So I'm assuming this question is relating to question one, which is are you a stay-at-home mum or a working mum? And if I had it any other way, um, I would be a stay-at-home mum full-time. Um, but unfortunately, uh, my husband's income isn't probably going to be sufficient for us to maintain our current lifestyle so um, i am required to work for that reason um, hopefully one day i will be able to be a stay home mom longer term and just you know have more time with my babies um, but they are growing up so so fast so that time is ticking away especially once i start school um, that time is you know they have to go to school so that time is already taken away but yeah, my ideal situation would be just to be a stay-at-home mum and do like a something online or you know some kind of business at home, um, which is something I'm currently working on. But it is quite difficult um, starting up a new business. But definitely, I would love to be a stay-at-home mum full time. Question three: How old were you when you had your first child? Okay, so I had Christopher when I turned when I just turned thirty. Um, I would have had him earlier, but I did have a miscarriage. Some of you may not already know this, um, but I did lose my first and my second pregnancy, unfortunately. Um, my first pregnancy, I was at my 12-week scan when I found out, and then my second pregnancy was what was considered a chemical pregnancy. Um, so I lost two pregnancies before I had my son. So obviously there was a time lapse in between there. Um, so it took a while for me to um, have my first baby because of that reason. I would have had, um, you know, in my ideal world, would have had a baby, my first baby earlier. But yeah, that's just um, a little obstacles that I had to overcome to be able to get my first baby. So I had my first child at 30 and then I had Adriana at 32. Um, so they were quite close pregnancies. But if you want some more information about my miscarriage and chemical pregnancy and all that, um, it's probably you know something that I can do on a separate video. So if that's something that you're interested in, leave a comment down below. And if I'm brave enough, I'll do that video for you guys um, because you know, this is a mummy community and if that will help some of you, um, you know, if you're going through a similar situation or you have gone through a similar situation, you can relate to that. It might help you connect, you know, with me on a deeper level um, and, you know, help you out in getting some advice and things like that from that situation. So if that's something that you're interested in, let me know and I will consider making a video about it. So let's go on to the next question. Question four is, what was the hardest thing about being pregnant for nine months? Um, I actually really enjoyed my pregnancy, so it wasn't really a hard journey for me. Um, I loved pretty much every minute of it. Obviously, I didn't really like being sick, um, but I think if I had to choose the hardest thing would probably be being so restricted in what I could eat and do. Um, obviously things that I could do was because I was getting bigger. The bending over, shaving my legs and things like that got a little bit difficult. Um, but it was more like being so cautious about what I was like, you know, intaking what I was eating, um, to make sure I wasn't harming the baby and all that. And I know that's a bit of a controversial topic because some people don't believe in, you know, certain recommendations when you're pregnant, what you should be eating, what you should not be eating. Um, so that, you know, that's, that's for... A personal opinion I suppose but being a first-time mum when I had Christopher I was quite strict with what I could 
and cannot consume um, or eat. So yeah, I found that a bit hard, like going out to a restaurant and trying to choose from the menu and making sure it was safe for baby and I. Um, so that would have been probably the most difficult thing for me. Other than that, I mean, obviously I had the nausea and the sickness and the bloating, the cramping and all that, but yeah, I kind of just rolled with it. I didn't really bother me so much. I expected it and you know, that's just part of pregnancy really, but I just, yeah, I felt, um, I felt limited in how much I could eat and what I could eat and that kind of was a bit annoying, um, because I love like mayo and, um, like ham, like sandwich ham and things like that and I was quite restricted and I didn't eat those things when I was pregnant so that's why that was difficult question six is best thing about being pregnant hands down without hesitation the best thing about being pregnant is feeling those beautiful kicks and movement I think that's the most blessed thing that you could experience as a woman um, it's just to feel those kicks and the movements of baby in there and knowing that that is your little human being that you are growing inside you. Yeah, definitely hands down the best thing about being pregnant. The next thing is, did your childbirth go as planned? So, um, no <laughs> is the most simple answer to that. Definitely not. Um, I did have some I guess expectations and ideas of how I wanted my um, birth to go but in both instances um, they weren't as that they weren't um, as I had planned or expected or you know as I had in my head um, if you've seen some other videos of mine I talked about my experience with a cesarean section which is what I had to go through with my first born Christopher um, because he was breached and I never even thought cesarean would be on the cards for me um, which is a little bit naive I guess as a first time mum you just expect to go natural um, or vaginally but I did not I had to do the cesarean for the health of me and the baby as he was breached head um, sorry bottom down um, so no that didn't go as planned and Adriana I did have a vaginal birth with her um, but there was some complications in between my labor. So again, I did a video on that as well about the pros and cons to a natural um, delivery and a pros and cons to a cesarean section. Cesarean section. So if you want to watch those videos in more detail and know about, you know, what my experience was and my thoughts and feelings behind that, then I'll leave those videos down below in the description bar. So go and watch them as well. Um, but yeah, to answer the question, no, my birth did not go as planned, but I wouldn't change it for the world either. Um, because it is, it, it turned out the way it was meant to turn out, I suppose. And at the end, I ended up with two healthy babies. So I can't ask for more than that. Next question is, would you have handled childbirth differently if you could redo it? Um, look, I probably wouldn't because... Um, you know, it wouldn't have been the experience that it was and I feel like I'm a stronger person because of the experience that I did have during that childbirth. Um, the only thing probably with my natural delivery with Adrian, I really wanted to get into the bath um, or even into the shower, like have some kind of water relaxation um, during my labour but I could not because I was quite restricted. Um, I had to have um, a lot of like pads on my tummy to monitor her heartbeat because we had some issues with her heart dropping again that's explained more in my um natural delivery pros and cons video um but i was kind of restricted as to how much i could move around what i could do because i was kind of like hooked up to a lot of things um so the only thing if i had to change it if i went for a third pregnancy which i am not if i go through a if I do end up having a third pregnancy and I am able to do a natural delivery, I would probably opt to maybe have a birth delivery. Um, that would be something really cool to experience. But yeah, I wouldn't have changed what happened with my first or my second child um, with their birth because, you know, it's my experience and I was meant to experience it that way. So I wouldn't change it. Do you, question eight is, do you co-sleep? I co-sleep with my babies, my both of my babies, up until they were six months old. Sometimes they would sleep in bed with me with a co-sleeper in the middle, um, or they would be in their bassinet right next to the side of the bed of mine. Um, 
and then when they turn six months i then trans um transition them over to their cot in their own bedroom so with christopher um we had some difficulties with his sleep patterns and all that when he was very very young he was colicky and just unsettled with sleep in general so i found it quite difficult and had to definitely co-sleep with him because otherwise none of us would have slept at all um and by the six month mark i was well and truly ready to sleep train him um, again that's a controversial kind of topic because some people are not for sleep training but in my situation it was a must because i was not coping at all and i ended up sleep training him at six months and by, I would say, seven to eight months, he was sleeping through the night and sleeping very well, self-settling and all that. So that was great. Um, with Adrian, I've been a little bit more lenient being a second child and just, you know, not having as much time to just focus on her. Um, but she sleeps in her own room, but now and again, she does try and sneak into our room first and just have little cuddles. And then when she gets like really sleepy then she takes herself into her own room anyway so technically that's not co-sleeping but i did co-sleep at the start of both um with both children up until they're six months old one must have gear for a baby so what so my one must gear for a baby would just have to be a pram or a stroller i am still using a pram um to this day with both kids i have a double pram i am I'm using the Upper Baby Vista, and that is seriously the best investment I've ever made in my life. Um, that's a bit dramatic, but it is a very good investment. It's expensive, so that's why I say investment. Um, but without it, I wouldn't have been able to do half the stuff of what I've done, like, you know, going out to theme parks, parks, shopping centers, and all that. You need a pram. Um, I know some babies don't sit in prams for long periods of time and I would hate to be in that situation because I don't know what I would do. Um, both of my babies have taken to prams very well. They nap in it, they sit in it um, most of the time and Christopher will still now and again like just climb on the front of the pram or um, he does have a second seat that he can still fit into um, which is very very handy when we go for like long day trips especially to like theme parks and things like that where he does still get tired as he is only four years old. So a pram is definitely the number one thing you need for a baby. So question 10 is, how many kids do you plan on having? So before my husband and I had children, we always had number like the number three in our minds of how many kids we wanted. Um, I don't know what it is, just number three resonated well with both of us. Um, and he is a sibling to like of three. Um, but I only have one sister. So we always had three in our minds, but then when we started trying for a baby, we had those complications at the start with miscarriage um, and just a, little, a lot of grief that came with that. Um, and then we had obviously Christopher and then Adriana soon after that. And I think we're quite happy with the two that we have. We're quite content and we feel complete. So I don't think we're gonna have any more. So two kids for us and we're very happy. Sorry if you can hear um, a buzzing machine outside. My husband, my husband is mowing the lawn, so I'm sorry that if that is distracting. But this is the only time I've got to film this video before Mother's Day, so I just wanted to get it done and filmed. Um, but the next question is, what has been the hardest thing about being a mum? Uh, there's a lot of hard things about being a mum, to be honest. Um, but the hardest thing I've, I'm still kind of dealing with. Um, is separation anxiety I get so attached to my babies and um, when I had to go back to work after maternity leave was one of the worst experience I've had as a mum when I had to drop off my baby and leave him for a whole day while I was at work and yeah that separation between mummy and baby was really difficult for both of us there was lots of tears on both sides and um, it took a while to adjust and I still miss them even to this day even having a four and a two-year-old I still miss them so 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 much when I'm at work um, Even after all these years, um, I miss them greatly. So I really do suffer with separation anxiety from my babies the number one thing um, why I want to be a home like a stay-home mum is so I can have more time with my babies so separating 
from them like straight after maternal leave was definitely the hardest it does get easier as time goes on um, and you adjust to that routine but it's still difficult saying goodbye to them and then being upset um, and yeah that's definitely the hardest thing in my opinion the next question is what was the most exciting milestone um, Oh, I think I have to say learning to walk. I think that was a really big milestone for both kids. Um, it was super exciting for both mum and baby. I think it's just a huge milestone to go from a new baby um, through, you know, all those other in-between milestones. But I really think that learning to walk is a big, massive milestone and super exciting when they get to that stage. Um, and I also feel like I'll do a milestone probably for my, like for this stage where Christopher is at the moment, um, which is the preschool stage. I think the most exciting milestone during this period is definitely him learning how to write. Um, he's now like learned how to write his name and he's learning all his letters and practicing them all the time. And I think that is so cool to watch your child learn how to write. Um, yeah, it's just super cool. So. When they're younger, I think the best milestone would be learning to walk. And then at this stage that Christopher's in now is definitely learning how to write. So I think that's really cool. Okay, I'm going to start losing some sunlight because the sun is going down. <sighs> it's the end of daylight savings. or has been for a while, but it just gets dark so early. Um, so I'm sorry if the lighting's a bit off right now, but this, um, it is getting quite dark outside. So just bear with me and I'll get through the, um, the next questions, which is, what is the worst thing your child has ever done? Um, I can't really think of anything that the worst thing that my child has ever done. I guess the most recent thing or more recent thing would be something that Adriana has done and she's my wild child, definitely. Um, she's got a crazy outgoing personality and we have actually toilet trained her, but um, there was a time when I thought I had put her to bed and she was sleeping and at night she does wear like a pull up um, while she's sleeping at night and I put her into her bed, tucked her in, said goodnight and left the room and she was very quiet, I just assumed she was asleep. About 20 minutes later she comes out of the room and she asked me to go into her bedroom to see something that she's done and I'm like okay child I thought you were asleep, what are you doing coming out of your room? calling me and yeah so I braced myself and what do I know I walk into her room she's actually taken she's done a number two she's taken off her pajamas and her nappy and she's spread the number two all over her beautiful white expensive rug in her bedroom yeah this was that probably nine o'clock at night um so you can imagine i was not happy that i had to clean her up and clean up her room and the rug thank god all the mess came out of her rug um because it is an expensive rug i suppose it's high quality so so everything did come out um but i wasn't a very happy mummy on that day so that's probably something that i remember still and um would be the worst thing um thus far Question 14 is dream vacation with your kiddos. Hands down, Disneyland. Absolutely Disneyland. I cannot wait to take my kids to Disneyland. That is something that is in the near future, hopefully. I don't want to take Adriana when she's too, too young um, because I want her to remember it. So when she's about five, I think is a good age, I will definitely be taking my kids to Disneyland. And Disneyland as in... Um, USA Disneyland. So question 15 is how has your life changed since your child or children have been born? How has it changed? Okay so my dream since I was little I've always played like mummies and daddies um, as a game with my cousins and my friends and things like that so I never really had like a definitive career path planned um, I was kind of always, even like when I left high school, I was always kind of unsure as to what I wanted to do personally with my life and future and career and all that. But I knew deep in my heart, I've always wanted to be a mum. So 
actually having babies myself is just such a huge blessing and definitely something that's been very fulfilling in my life so it has changed my life in that aspect because I'm able to fulfill that dream of mine and yeah honestly can't even imagine life without children I just I don't know what I'll do with myself I don't know what I did before children so having children now is definitely being a very fulfilling um, in my life so question 16 is finish the sentence it makes my heart melt to see it makes my heart melt to see my kids getting along it honestly is the most beautiful beautiful thing to see your children getting along and playing and showing a love for each other by like just the way they look at each other the cuddles the kisses and just playing so nicely side by side together um, I think that's been the most beautiful thing having since having two kids is seeing them together um, and seeing them play and all that so definitely melts my heart every time I see them getting along having fun um, and just showing that love for each other and cuddling each other and yeah, it's so so sweet Next question is where do you shop for your kids? <sighs> I pretty much shop anywhere <laughs> um, Anywhere and everywhere. Um, I guess I go just to name a few um, Definitely Kmart if you watch any of my other videos, you'll definitely know I shop at Kmart a lot a lot maybe too much um, but Kmart Target Big W all those department shops um, TK Maxx is great range for kids, um, H&M is very affordable as well, um, so yeah, all the typical um, clothing shops. Question 18 is your favourite mummy hack? Um, I guess my favourite mummy hack would have to be prepare, prepare, prepare. If you have an appointment the next day or a play group or your child is going to school or something like that where you need to be rushing at the door on a certain time schedule um, and you know it's uh, for mornings for me is always a rush and stressful as well in saying that so um, if I, I find that if I prepare lunches bags even outfits for the morning then my mornings go so much smoother and I'm less stressed the kids are less stressed and things just happen quicker and we do get out the door on time and make it to those scheduled activities um, otherwise, you know, in times where I don't plan, I'm too tired and I just, I just can't be bothered packing lunches and all that, I just find myself in a whole lot of stress in the morning and just get so angry and I yell at the kids because of it and all that. So it's not very nice and I hate being that kind of mum. Um, it's not a nice sight to see. So question 19 is the biggest struggle that you have with being a mum. I think the biggest challenge would be just juggling everything, all the... All the things that you have to do as a mum and a woman so like you know home life and being a great wife and being an awesome mum and also looking up to yourself as well um, which really does come low in my priorities unfortunately but it is very important as a mum to definitely look up to yourself and do a lot of self-care and I've started to be pretty good about this in the last probably year um, but it's just about juggling it all juggling your time and attention to both children um, so yeah that will be definitely probably the biggest struggle that I have as a mum and last question is number 20 and I'm really losing all my light now so I better hurry up but my last question is what is the best thing about being a mum and I have to say is just watching my children grow and learn in front of your eyes and knowing that you created that beautiful human um, I think it's just so beautiful to see and you really do see them change in front of your eyes and grow overnight like so many times I'll put my child to bed and the next day they wake up I'm like wow you've seriously grown since I put you down to bed last night um, their growth is so rapid and even seeing them every day you still definitely see changes in them um, so it's just beautiful to see and how they do develop and meet those milestones um, throughout the years and yeah it's just wonderful to know that you created that little human being and they are thriving and growing and developing beautifully because of that so anyways that is the end of my tag if you want to do this tag as well don't forget the questions are in the description bar please do go check them out and do this tag I'd love to see your answers if you have liked this video please do subscribe down below for more videos from me and thumbs up as well before you click out I'll really appreciate it thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one bye everyone